All right. Well, the tradition continues here on the program, as we have seen over the last several months. When this man has a fight, we are blessed enough to carve out some time with this gentleman. Of course, a big one coming up this Saturday. Headlines UFC Vegas 22 against Derek Brunson. Happy to be joined once again by the trailblazer himself, Kevin Holland. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing great. So you're getting ready to travel to Vegas tomorrow as we record. You've had a lot of time to think about this one after a crazy 2020 where yeah. you went 5-0. and What has it been like having a super extended training camp for the first time in a little bit? Man, long. You know, uh, it's been um, it's been a process, you know, uh, that, that I can say for sure. Uh, camps are different, you know, it's like, a, it's nothing like getting up off the couch and going out there and getting it versus camps. You kind of, you got to really put it all in, put it all in there and, you know, make it all happen every day, all day, you know? <laughs> so that was, uh, that was fun, you know, to say the most. I, I know the last time we, we spoke before the Jacare fight, you said that you actually preferred that new date and that new opponent over the scheduled main event with Jack Hermanson because you wanted to still be able to have the opportunity to jump into short notice opportunities like you've been doing, you know, for the last several fights. And once you became quote unquote, a main eventer, those chances may not be there as much. So uh, this is a main event, albeit against a guy you've wanted to fight for quite some time. Did you yeah. sort of have to accept the fact that you are a main event guy and that things are probably going to change, especially with how you ended that fight with Jacare? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you kind of have to accept that that's what's going to happen with the game, you know, but, uh, you know, still would like to ultimately take last second fights. You know, it's like, I love last second fights. I love stepping in there at any point in time and getting in to bang somebody up. But at the same time, you know, uh, I make enough money now for this is like a professional career and I'm a professional athlete. So I have to act like a professional athlete. So, you know, uh, it was fun. You know, doing things the way I've been doing things, but you know, now we're gonna do things the professional way and still take last second fights if they pop up. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, it's as you say that, like now that you've had a few months to sort of digest the year that you had, like the awards, the nominations, being put in this upper echelon category in the sport. Like, what did 2020 mean to you? Not just in terms of the money that you're talking about, which you made a lot of, but, you know, just like overall growth, experience, lessons learned, et cetera. Like, what's your biggest takeaway from 2020? Uh, I'd have to say, you know, the overall growth. Um, I learned how to deal with things in 2020, you know what I mean, in a different way. You know, I, I learned that, you know, I can deal with things in a different way. So, uh, overall, it's just a bigger, better man now than I ever once was before. And that, you know, uh, is awesome. Other than that, 2020 was just another year to go out there and to fight as much as, uh, much as I could. And, uh, I was thankful that they allowed me to fight as much as I could, you know, it's like, I'm hoping to do the same thing again this year, but like you said, main event now, um, bigger fights, you know, names and stuff like that. You know, you got to promote the fights, you got to do et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I won't be able to fight as much as I used to, but you know, Taking out of last year, your boy was the man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you definitely were the man. Um, before we talk about Saturday, I, I did want to get your take on what we saw a little over a week ago. We saw the middleweight champion, Israel Adesanya, jump up to 205. You loved the gusto in him doing that, but he was on the wrong end of a unanimous decision to Jan Bohovic. He's going to return back to 185 and do his thing there. What were your thoughts on the fight, Izzy's performance, and ultimately how it all turned out? Well, you know, uh, you know, people that track like he didn't do good. You know, he did pretty good. Uh, you know, he did he did good. You know, people think that they seen something because he got out wrestled. I felt like the man got outstruck. You know, it's like uh, overall, you know, like he like he said, he dared to be great. You know, and 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 props to him. You know, it's like he went out there and took a tough fight and did, you know, better than most guys would do. It's not like going from you know. Um, it's not like going from, you know, 155. I mean, like one. It's not like going from 145 to 155, or it's not like going from 135 to 145. You know, it's like 185 to 205. That's a pretty big jump. You know, so he went out there. He tried it. He said he didn't put on weight. I don't believe that. You know what I mean? It's like if you look at the Israel Sanya, first guy in the UFC to the Israel Sanya who was fighting Paulo Castillo, he'd been put on weight. So it's like maybe he didn't put on too much more for the. The Jan fight, was that the downfall? 
no. Overall, he just, you know, he wasn't, uh, I don't feel like he was normally Izzy that night. You know, it's like, uh, and then at the same time, John went out there and fought a really, really good fight. So it's like, just know that when you fight Izzy, you got to fight a really, really good fight. You know what I mean? You have to go out there and, and you have to play it as smart as you can. Because the guy, you know, the guy is pretty good. Like you said, you know, he, he stepped up. He dared to be great. And you that was something you appreciated right off the bat. He comes up short despite a, a, a pretty solid effort against a bigger guy. In your eyes, as, as a top 10 guy getting ready for a huge fight on Saturday, were you, I guess I'll say, were, were you happy with how it turned out because it keeps the division moving and kind of makes your road to a title shot a little bit shorter Had he have, in, in, instead of had he had won? No, I keep teasing the idea that I'm uh... – I'm going 170 pounds. I'm about to go fight Usman for the belt. I don't care what they <laughs> do. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I'm going to go have fun elsewhere. You know, it's like, nah, man, I really don't. I'm not really stressing the belt. You know, it's like, I'm not really stressing anything. Uh, if he would have won and he would have stayed up there and it would have made it so there was no belt, then I guess Kev gets to fight five times. You know what I mean? It's like six times in one year. If not, you know, he's back here and everybody's like, oh, I want to see you versus Izzy. I want to see you versus Izzy. Well, you know, a good a good majority of the people, you know, get past Brunson, then more people will say it. Then get past, you know, Till or uh, uh, Gaslam, somebody like that. And then more people will say it again. And it's like, uh, eventually the time will come. You know, and it's like, I'm, I'm all about the styles. I'm not all really about the belt. You know, a lot of people love the belt. I'm like, shit, I got plenty of jewelry. I got a lot of gold. You know what I mean? I got a nice belt buckle made from a... Uh, you know, a nice company out here in Texas, you know, for uh, some Texas boy type stuff. You know, it's like, I, I got belts, you know, I got a nice buckle. And so a lot of people don't have that buckle, one of a kind, you know what I mean? So, you know, I mean, it is what it is, you know, it's like, I'm not really worried. If he would have stayed at 205 and won the belt there and he would have been doing the, the double champ thing, as long as you do it as good as Amanda Nunes, no problem, you know, and it's like, and there has to be a challenge there, you know, and it's like I, I could see him not wanting to do a rematch. But now that he's coming off of a loss, I think it gets the division more so moving. You know, I think he's back hungry again. So he's going to take on all comers to prove that he can go back up there and try that again. And so all comers, I'm one of those governors when I come, you know, when you when you say teasing 170, are we like are you just throwing it out there for for S and G's or like are we really because I know you talked about it before and then it was kind of like nah I'm 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 good where I'm at right now I don't I, need to cut that extra weight what are we thinking I gotta convince my coaches it's not it's not convincing me it's convincing my coaches that you know we we could do the drop and still be strong and still feel good and it's like I don't cut any weight for 85 you know? and it's like I almost get chewed out because they feel like I'm not eating enough and it's like I feel them 100 percent but it's like you know it's just you know, it's not part of the, the job at 85. You know, it's like I eat what I want to eat, do what I want to do. As long as I'm training, it is what it is. You know, for 70, I feel like it'd be a lot more discipline and I'm ready to start being disciplined. So, you know, I think I could be more disciplined for 85 and probably a bigger 85er. Uh, but ultimately, you know, it's whatever. I take, you know, it's like I just want to fight as often as possible. So if they start playing the game with me at 85, maybe I can go over here, you know what I mean? Fight a bunch of times, they come back up here, fight a bunch of times, you know, I just want to. Bing, 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 bang, bang, and then do my thing. You know, that's just what it's all about. <laughs> everyone's, you know, everyone's talking about like lightweight and welterweight right now, like being so interesting and having all these questions. But I feel like we got three big main events at 85 coming up in the next month. You mentioned Till and Vittori, you got Whitaker and Costa. This is all happening in like a month span. Is is middleweight not getting enough love right now? Because things Whit are really interesting. I mean, I mean, it's going to be curious to see if Paul Luca Steele was just off his game that night, right? Or if he just, you know, I don't know. It's like, I'm not really high off the Paul Luka still fire right now. He needs to go get a dub for sure. You know, it's like matching him up with Whitaker. You know, it's like he could lose that fight. Then all of a sudden that buzz behind Paul Luka still is kind of gone. You know, it's like never, you know, not too hyped off that guy. You know, it's like, uh, it's, a, it's only a big fight there because Robert Whitaker's in it. You know, it's like, it's not a big fight because Paul Luka Steele's in the fight. You know, it's like, no disrespect to Paul Lucas Steele. The guy's a, a mean, mean-looking bodybuilder. But, you know, we're talking about fighting. Here. And, uh, you know, coming down to fighting, you know, uh, he didn't look great at all in his last fight. And they say you're only as good as your last fight, right? So my last fight was a sparring session in the gym, and I didn't do great in the last round. My my bad, my bad. Oh, good. We lost you. There um, he is. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, 
you only as good as your last one. Paulo's was still last one. Wasn't fantastic at all. And then I seen the shadow boxing videos after that and stuff. And it's like still no cardio, you know, still no fluid movement. And it's like, that's no, that's no big fight. Robert Whitaker weathers a, a, a little bit of a couple squeezes from the muscles and he'll beat the crap out of that guy. So <laughs> it's not a big fight. But did you, that Darren Till, Marvin Vittori fight? Now that shit's interesting. <laughs> you say so yourself. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm sure you're going to be watching that one very closely. Can, can I ask, did, did you see what Costa said recently about the Adesanya fight and if he had a, a little too much wine? A little too much wine? What would you think I mean, about that? Shit, you can, give me, you can give me six shots of Hallerhead and I'm still going to go out there and bust your head. You know what I mean? So I don't really think it matters. You know what I mean? It's like I come from a Kung Fu place. You know what I mean? I'm like drunken monkey around here. Uh, I don't know, man. I just... You know, those undefeated guys, you know, those guys who've never tasted a loss before and then they finally taste a loss. They just tend to they tend to cry a lot, you know, quit bitching, go out there and, and do better next time. You know, it's like you lost. Oh, well, it is what it is. You know, it's like if you can't if you can't handle losing after talking shit, you know, it's like don't talk shit. You know what I mean? It's simple. You know, it's like I think that's what it is. I think he's more butthurt than anything that it went the way that it went. You know, it's like you were drunk off wine. Get the fuck out of here. Who gets drunk? What, what man gets drunk off wine? You know what I mean? It's like you're you're a full grown man here getting drunk off wine. It's, it's a little uh, little iffy if you ask me. Fair enough. Well, now I mean you you probably won't be drinking wine on Friday, but you're gonna fight Derek Brunson on Saturday. We've been talking about Derek, you and I, for quite some time now, and it yeah. finally happens in a few days in a big spot. How excited are you to? Finally get inside the octagon with him and, and put your hands on this man because you've been talking about it for a while. You know what, man? My coach brought to realization that, you know, the way things went down when me and him had a conversation at the airport, the way he responded to the thing and everything like that. I, I, if this is if this is what I wanted it to be originally, I won that battle already. So this is just full-blown another MMA fight, you know? I get a chance to go out there and dare to be great. <laughs> uh, nah, man, I'll go out there. I'm happy to get it to go out there, and I'm happy just to go out there and uh, be inside the cage again. Ain't no party like an octagon party, you know what I mean? So I'm happy to go out there and be the life of the party this time, and uh, that'll be a blast. So, you know, sucks I can't play video games for a week, and uh, oh shit, we got people waiting on them. <laughs> you know, sucks we can't play video games for a week. But at the end of the day, it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It's like um, can't do a lot of the things I like to do at the house for a week. But, you know, after I whoop Brunson, I can do it all in a, in a better fashion. So it's OK. It is what it is. You know, you can't bring the video games with you. Yeah, you can bring them with you. But the Internet over there, you know, it just doesn't work the same. Yeah, it doesn't work the same. You know, it doesn't work like the at home. internet. You know, I got, I got right. plugged right on in that thing. You know, it's like I'm moving high speed. You know, it's like and at the at the hotel, I'm moving slow speed, you know, and I'm not trying to move slow like that. <laughs> for, the, for, uh, for, for those who, who follow you on social media, we, we see two words that, that have been attached to you for a while. Skilled violence. Those two words seem to mean a, a lot to you. So I'm curious, like what type of display of of skilled violence can we expect on Saturday? And what do those two words mean to you? Because you've seen an awful lot. Yeah. So. uh you know, guy I really like, you know, and like uh, they came up with a company called Skill Violence. And when he uh, when he dropped the name, I was like, damn, that name's fire. You know what I mean? And he wanted me to be the man. So I'm like, yeah, I appreciate being the man. But Skill Violence, it fits well with me. You know what I mean? I, I am a very, very violent individual. You know what I mean? And, and you know, and it's like, try not to be, but that's just what I am. You know, and it's like, at the end of the day, you know, I train day in and day out to be a patient, calm man. But at the end of the day, you do this, you do this, you know what I mean? And I'm just happy I learned how to do this, uh, what you could say, in a, in a smart, skilled manner. You know what I mean? And it's like uh, the violence I do display is usually pretty nasty and pretty nice. You know, uh, you watch the Jacare fight. You know, it's like we were doing jujitsu on bottom and uh, I was still smacking and pinging and dinging those elbows. You know what I mean? Real viciously. And we're just where most guys who train jujitsu as much as we train jujitsu at Travis's. Would have simply just uh, simply just would have you know tried to grapple, and it's like that doesn't speak volumes. Think about the interviews where I talk about the bodies in the trunk, you know. And it's like take it how you want to take it, you know. It's, I take it in a different manner. There you go, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, I assume. Yeah, you know, 
My bad. My lawyer did. <laughs> uh, you know. I, I got you, man. Uh, I, I saw the post you you put on Twitter not too long ago. It was uh, a picture of Derek Brunson with the bleach blonde hair, and I believe it said "Spring Breakers this week." Be like, let's bleach our hair. So, do do you have do you have a preference on wit on who you put the skilled violence upon? Natural haired Brunson, or do you want blonde haired Brunson on Saturday? They say blonde haired Brunson is the best Brunson, so I'll take Cisco. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I feel like Derek is. <laughs> one of the more underappreciated guys in this division. I mean, he's been around yeah. for a while. He's made the move to Sanford MMA. He's clearly gotten better. He's won the yeah. last three fights. Shabazian fight was pretty impressive. What have, what have you made of his run recently? He's dedicated, man. He's dedicated. You know, props to him. You know, he's been trying to get his stuff together for a long time. Since I've gotten the UFC, he's been trying to get his stuff together. You know, for as far as reaching out, as far as making moves, busted moves. And he's done what he's had to do to ultimately put himself in a better spot. But let's be real here. I hate to be like this, but it's like this is his run to a title. You know what I mean? This is his last run to a title. And it's like he's putting everything and all behind this. He's like, what? How old is he? 30 something years old, 38 years old. You know, and it's like I plan on being done with this shit at 34. You know, he's still over here scratching at this shit at 38. You know, and it's like he's searching for something that's just not going to ever get there. And it's like if he was to fight Israel Sanya again, like, let's be real here. What's going to happen? You know, it's like if you're representing USA, you're going to go out there and get your ass whooped, make USA look bad. Sit down, take this ass whoop I'm about to give you and just let me go out there and make us look good. So that's what I do. Him, on the other hand, people don't even like him. You know, it's like how long has he been in the video game and nobody plays with him? You know, it's like I it's like I'm not I didn't want to have to go there. But let's be real here. His own family and friends, they use him the first couple of days just for support. But after that, they quit using him. People I don't even know, they use my character because they like the swag. They like the attitude and they just like who I am. You know what I mean? And because it's natural and it's true. If that's naturally true, who Derek Brunson is, he should not be on camera. He's not a people person. He's not the one that people want to talk about or be around. He should just sit back, take the ass whooping that this young man's going to give him, you know, and realize that his time has came and passed. And if he was ever going to be something, it was when he knocked out Leonardo Machida. You know, that was his fame at a belt. After that, it's a wrap. You're done, dog. How does it feel that you're finally in the game? I mean, it took long enough, right? Jeez yeah. Louise. It feels pretty. It feels pretty good. It feels pretty good. It feels pretty good. I play with my character. Uh, I don't know if my character sucks or I suck, but let's just <laughs> suck. So it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get that rating up, man. Good performance on Saturday boosts boosts up that rating a little bit. Yeah, 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 man. You know, um, it'd be nice, but at the end of the day, I'm just happy to be in a video game. So if the rating sucks, at least I got there, and, you know, that's what's up. You know, at this point in time, I'm just worried about busting heads. If that builds, that builds the rating, awesome. You know, more beneficial for busting heads. You know, usually you just get free tattoos and don't get it twisted. I take full advantage of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's 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 wild the difference weeks make in the sport because the the hangover from UFC 259 seemed like it lasted forever. It almost like Saturday, like this past Saturday, this guy went under the radar, and then we had a main event, didn't have a completion, ends up in a no contest. So now we're ready to turn the page to the Saturday. You and you and Derek Brunson finally going to go at it. We need a main event to a completion, Kevin. How does this thing happen? Shit, DQ. I stomp on his head if he keeps running his fucking mouth. <laughs> Don't do that, Kevin. Come on. We don't need we don't need more any more DQs or no contests. All right. It is, this is the way it goes. Derek Brunson tries to hunt me. I sub him. All right. Derek Brunson tries to hunt me. I catch him with a nice shot on the way in. He goes to sleep. If Derek Brunson stays patient, he gets his ass whooped until he can't get his ass whooped no more. And then the fight's over. I mean, sub, crash bandit coop knockout, or simply a good display of this most looking striking you've ever seen in the ufc looking fucking good and that's me baby let's go <laughs> all right i'll be reading those little comments everybody be putting on the post i'm out of off balance and unorthodox i look kung fu baby let's go <laughs> yeah so i'm down for whatever i just want to have a good time all i need Derek brunson to do is to cut me open because then i get two weeks off from the gym and I need that. You know what I mean? It's like, we've been working hard. I take two weeks off. You know what I mean? Last week of March, I'm trying to take somebody's nasty ass daughter on the, the, the best vacation of their life. So we'll see what happens. What? Who's what? Yeah. Who, what? 
someone's nasty ass daughter on the vacation of their life. I don't know who's daughter be, but you know, there's somebody out there who wants their daughter to have a good time. You know, put them up for grabs. And there you and and there you are, the knight in shining armor, Kevin Kevin Holland. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> So, so I mean, with these with these big fights coming up in April, you know, this is an opportunity. You could slide back in there if something happened. Is that something that you're interested in, or you're like, nah, this is a hard camp. Let's 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 take a take a couple couple of weeks off. Look, two weeks off means that I'm ready to go. First fight of April. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't mean I'm done. You know what I mean? It just means you know, I get to go uh, have a little fun under the sun for a couple of days, and then after I have fun underneath the sun, you know. Back fly to, to Vegas and fight. Back to business, baby. I'm like Dennis Robinson. You know what I mean? I can go out and party hard as hell one night and then win a championship the next night. Don't play with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't play with me. I'll, I'll do it. Don't, but, don't tip me. You know what I mean? I'm going to see if anybody wants to go and sip Hallerhead before we go out there and fight. Don't play with me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. La- last thing, we, I thought it was pretty cool to see you on on the Joe Rogan experience, biggest podcast on the planet, man. I mean, that's pretty cool to see you and Travis Luter get that shine, man. What was that experience? There's a, there's a pun for you. What, what was that like for you? Ah, dude, it was pretty cool. Uh, it was just cool. Cause you know, it was like, I, I me, first show me and my mom ever watched, like, you know what I mean? Together when I was younger was, was fear factor. And it was when Joe Rogan was the man on there. So, you know what I mean? Just being able to be around Joe for me was, you know, it was amazing. That was one of the greatest things about joining the UFC was like, man, I'm about to be able to get interviewed by Joe Rogan, you know what I mean? Talk to him about Fear Factor and, you know, I was trying to hope I could convince him to do one little show with me on there, you know what I'm talking about? But he wasn't talking about it, so. Oh, wow, I finished that guy. <laughs> wow, with a pistol. Oh, my God. <laughs> Check me out. I'm about to die now. Uh-oh. Don't die. Oh, I died. Ah, but I killed him with a pistol. One hand on the phone, one hand on the trigger. Let's go, smoke him. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's my fault. It's my fault. You died. Fault. My boy expects me to die twenty times. He got four thousand sitting over there, so he can buy me back on Call of Duty. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're, you're the man, Kevin. I, I. I this is why I enjoy these traditions. Tradition is an important thing, and we get to do these every, every fight week, and and it's amazing. Is there uh, anything else you'd like to get off your chest before we wrap this thing up, and you can go back and get your life back? Shout out to everybody who's on the shirt, especially Beer Roofing. I ain't been tagging you guys and playing a video game, which is much lately because I've been tired as hell, but shout out to Beer Roofing. You know what I mean? Love you guys. <laughs> All the best to you, man. Safe travels to Vegas. Best of luck in the fight on Saturday, Kevin. Thanks again. Oh, thank you, boss. Appreciate you guys.